In this video, I'll teach you how to make your skeletons look a lot better. So in last week's video, you saw me go through my backlog, paint a few miniatures, and what you guys commented most about was my HeroQuest skeletons and mummies. So I thought I'd show you step by step how I painted these, so you can copy the paint job and do it yourself. It's a fairly simple paint job, you can do it with a regular paintbrush, but it's gonna go a lot faster if you do it with the airbrush. I start off by painting the whole miniature with Warpstone Glow. It's a vibrant mid-tone green color, and normally I wouldn't use this as a shadow if I was painting with green shadow but because we're using a different hue as a highlight this mid-tone green is going to feel like a shadow once we get the beige tones in there. I then airbrush with Morgas bone from above. Because we don't want it to end up in the shadows we want to make sure that we only use like a 90 degree angle spraying from above on the skeleton. Time for the brush, let's add that Morgas bone together with some ivory on the wet palette. For our first coat, we just add a layer of Morgas bone. We focus it on all of the raised areas that's in our focus areas on the skeleton. On the HeroQuest ones, it was the shoulders, the chest and the head. A little bit on the thighs, maybe on the feet if you have a lot of time to spare. We then add a bit of ivory to that Morgas bone. It's important to remember to add it to a smaller surface when you add more highlights. So closer in on the chest, higher up on the area. So when we do it like this, we get smooth transitions from one color to the other. As a final thing for the skeletons and mummies we add a bit more ivory, maybe even you want to go clean ivory on a layer as well if you really want to punch that contrast. Again just remember to do a smaller surface than the previous time and you're gonna end up with some awesome looking minis. For my minis I wanted to have a little bit warmer colorful tone to my skeletons so I took a sepia ink and airbrushed from underneath into the crevices underneath the arms and underneath the legs and on the sides of the head. This made them a little bit more warm and I feel like it really gave them more saturation as well and doing this with inks is a great way to just add more saturation and color and contrast through an airbrush after you're finished with the brush painting. This should be enough for the mummies, but we have some more job to do on the skeletons. Let's start with the scythe. We're gonna paint the scythe and the base with dark sea blue. The handle of the scythe is gonna be painted with rhinox hide. To highlight the scythe, we're using moot green. I thin it down to sort of like a medium transparent color. It's not a glaze or a wash, uh, but it's somewhere in between. I paint the edges of the scythe and I paint the center of it, creating this inverse arch pattern. I don't know if that's the way you call it. And then we do the same thing again, but in a smaller surface once the color is dried. As a final thing, I add some ivory to that moot green. Do the same thing again, but on a smaller surface, and that should give us a really cool reflective side. For the handle, we're using brown sand from Vallejo and painting in wood grains with your hand. If you make these one millimeter thick, you can then highlight it, adding a little bit of ivory to that brown sand and just adding it to the upper edge of that one millimeter thick line that you just drew. And that should create a feeling of volumes on the wood grains, even though there is none there. But with that, we have the sword done. Now it's just time for the bases. It's a simple technique, but it might require a few practices before you nail it. I'm using this 20 year old color Goblin Green as my base color, but I think uh, Skarsnik Green that Games Workshop have now is quite similar. So you can probably pick this one up again using the same technique as we did with the site to thin down the paint to like medium layer thickness. Drawing different circles or shapes on the miniature on the base. And once that is done, we're gonna create some volumes with our painting. I do it by adding color from one side to the other, leaving some of it that dark blue. I then go over and do the same thing again, but on a smaller surface, doing some of the edges and a little bit more on the center of the stone. And that should give us a really nice effect where the edges are sort of lit up and the center creates this rounder shape. And once you've done the second layer, you do the same thing, but you add a little bit more ivory, maybe two turns. And with that, you should have something that looks really cool, that has some volume to it. You can redo it a few times. And once you've got a hold of it, it's gonna look amazing. I have a final tip. I just take a little bit of clean ivory and just do some dots, create some like verdigree effect on the base. These tiny dots, again, just create the atmosphere a bit more. It's not something you have to do, but it's really helpful to kind of create a bit more interest on it. So it's not just round circles that has like a ball shape. And with that, that's everything I did with skeletons. That's why it's so fast. I focus on these areas. 
the back is not at all as important. I do just like one layer with the brush there, the legs the same thing, just one layer, and then we put the rest of the focus on these areas. I listed all of the paints in the video description. I've added a link to my website where I list all of the gear that I use. If you follow any of those links, the affiliate kicks a bit of money back to this channel. If you want to support the channel even a bit more, you can join my Patreon and do like the awesome people that already support me there. Thanks so much. And with that said, I think it's goodbye. Have a great day. Bye bye.